Welcome back. And in our sports news, U.S. Open defending champion Rafa Nadal saved seven set points in the second set and battled back from two breaks down in the third to beat Andrei Gulbev of Kazakhstan 6-3, 7-6, 7-5 on Tuesday in his opening match at the U.S. Open. The Spaniard, whose confidence has suffered since losing Wimbledon, was far from his best, but raised his game at critical points, reeling off the last five games in succession to subdue his opponent. Nadal, a 10 times Grand Slam winner, showed his championship class in roaring back from 2 5 down in the third set after winning the second set tie break 7 1. It's normal to start a tournament like this with uh, some nerves, and that's what happened today. And he, he didn't help because he played very fast all the time. All the shots was he trying. He was trying to do a winner in almost every shot, so <laughs> it was difficult for me to find to find the rhythm. Uh, anyway, it was a positive, positive start, winning in straight sets, even if it was <laughs> unbelievable that I won in a straight set. And in other men's matches, world number one Novak Djokovic showed no ill effects from the sore shoulder that caused him to retire from the Cincinnati final and gave himself high marks for his brief workout at the Arthur Ashe Stadium. After battering qualifier Connor Nyland at 6 0 5 1, before the Irishman quit the contest, the Wimbledon and Australian Open winner ripped 14 winners to three. Djokovic made just seven unforced errors to 18 for the struggling Nyland and broke his serve on five of six opportunities while never facing a break point. Djokovic, who improved his sensational 2011 record to 58-2, said that he didn't really mind spending less time on court and that he didn't feel any pain. And this year, I think this year, more than, more than ever, I'm, I'm, you know, I have a good chance. I'm, I'm, I'm playing the best tennis of my life. I'm have, I have a great confidence. And um, yeah, it's, the conditions are suitable to my game. I love the, the entertainment, I love the crowd. And to be honest with you, you know, I, I even have more motivation to, to, to play and to win more Grand Slams. And uh, now more than ever that I know that I, can, that I can actually, you know, perform equally well on any surface, that I have equal, equal chances on, on any Grand Slam that I play. So that this is something that gives me a lot of desire to come back to the court. And in the women's tennis, Caroline Wozniacki cruised into the second round with a 6-3, 6-1 demolition of Spaniard Nuria Lagostera Vives, standing a signal that the world's top-ranked player may be ready to claim her first Grand Slam victory. Wozniacki, the U.S. Open runner-up in 2009, blasted 22 winners and never lost serve to defeat her unseeded opponent in one hour and 20 minutes. The 21-year-old top-seeded Dane was particularly effective at the net, winning 14 of 17 points under sunny skies at Arthur Ashe Stadium. I went in today. It was important for me to, to serve well, and I thought I, um, I started quite a few good points with my serve. And, and you know, it was, uh, she's not a very tall player, so I tried to open up the court a little bit more and, and then tried to take advantage of the short, ball, the short balls I got. And I've won six tournaments this year already, and... Uh, you know, I should definitely not be complaining. I'm, uh, I'm in a good position. I'm in a good spot. I'm happy. I'm healthy, and I can go out there and compete. And that's what's most important. And I'm winning a lot of matches, which is, which is why we, we practice. We practice to win. And uh, yeah, I've won a lot of matches, and that's what satisfies me. Meanwhile, Serena Williams was on her very best behaviour and especially close to her top form when she made her long-awaited appearance at the US Open on Tuesday. There was no repeat of the foul-mouthed tirade that she disgraced herself with at Flushing Meadows two years ago. This time, she was all smiles when she demolished Serbia's Bojana Jovanovski 6-1, 6-1 in less than one hour. It was a clinical and ruthless display from Williams, who has won the US Open three times, but is still on her probation for her outburst two years ago. I just am here to play, and everyone's been playing all year, and I haven't, so I've, I've played Eastbourne, Wimbledon, a couple more, Stanford. I have played like five tournaments this year, so I don't think that's usually a favorite going into another Grand Slam, so... You know, it is what it is, and I'm just happy again. Like, I can't even express how excited I am to be playing. 
Russia's athletics queen Yelena Isinbayeva became the latest upset at the World Athletics Championships in Daegu, South Korea on Tuesday as she failed to gain a medal in an event won by Brazilian Fabiana Mura. Isinbayeva, the reigning Olympic champion and world record holder, failed to clear 4.80 metres, well short of her world record of 5.05 metres. Her best clearance of 4.65 left her down in sixth place. Mura took the gold with a 4.85 metre clearance. Martina Strutz of Germany took second with 4.80 metres, while Russia's Svetlana Fiofavano was third with 4.75 metres. Yes, I'm very happy with this title. Uh, in the beginning, I knew that uh, I need to do a, a, my best to, if I want the gold medal, but I was, before I was just thinking about the one medal, then for eight I knew that was enough for I get this. And when I cleared for 85, uh, I knew that I, I had the gold, gold medal and I was very happy for this. And continuing the winning form of Russia's female athletes, Olga Kaneskina grimaced her way through downtown Daegu today to win the women's 20-kilometer walk title at the World Championships for a record third time. Kaneskina, who eclipsed compatriot Olympiada Ivanova's mark with her third title, crossed the line in a time of 1 hour, 29 minutes and 42 seconds. And in other athletics results, world record holder David Rudisha of Kenya won gold in the men's 800 metres with a dominant display of front running. Rudisha, who broke the world record twice in a week in 2010, took the title in Daegu in a time of 1 minute 43.91 seconds ahead of Abu Bakr Kaki of Sudan. The bronze medal went to Russian Yuri Bozakovsky. The Kenyan is unbeaten over distance in two years, his last loss coming when he failed to qualify for the 2009 World Championship final in Berlin. Oh yeah, of course, yes. I'm satisfied. To win a gold medal was fantastic for me. That was only my end. I didn't even mind about the time. The important thing was just to win the world medal. Teenager Kirani James chased down defending champion Lashawn Merritt on the home straight to win the 400-metre gold and Granada's first medal at the World Championships. James, who turns 19 on Thursday and has run at just a handful of senior races, surged past American Merritt just before the line to claim victory in a personal best of 44.60 seconds. Olympic champion Merritt, who has just returned from a 21-month 20, ban for doping, had come round the final bend with what looked like a comfortable lead before being beaten by James's finish. And finally, Jessica Ennis, Britain's brightest hope for athletics gold at next year's London Olympics, lost her heptathlon world title to Russia's Tatyana Shanova. Bidding to become the first Briton to retain a world title, Ennis had held a 118-point lead after the morning's long jump. But her chances of retaining the title she won two years ago all but disappeared in the second event, the javelin throw. The 25-year-old Ennis trailed the Olympic bronze medalist by 133 points, going into the seventh and final event of the competition, and the Russian was able to protect her commanding lead comfortably in the 800 metres. Uh, I feel me very happy, and uh, I think it was so easy when I ran 800 meters uh, for the finish line. I think that all kept at long uh, personal best. It was very easy, and I can do it in the future again. I just let myself down the javelin. That was where it went wrong, but I just have to go away with on that and hopefully improve that next year. And finally in sport, Wayne Rooney believes England face a difficult match away to Bulgaria on Friday in their Euro 2012 qualifier. The Manchester United striker also said that if they can beat Bulgaria, then they will be confident of coming away from this international period with two wins after their match at home to Wales next Tuesday. I think it will be a really tough game. Um, Bulgaria away, at, um, you know, I'm sure it will be a... A good atmosphere and a difficult game to come away with three points, but that's got to be our aim to try and get the three points there. And um, you know, Wales are a good team, but you know, you'd like to think that we've got enough to beat them at home. So it's um, hopefully we can come out of these two games with six points. 
And finally this evening, a new type of indoor recreation is taking the Emirate of Sharjah by storm, where an elite paintball park has recently opened, claiming it to be the largest paintball park in the Middle East. At Sharjah's Golf and Shooting Club, the indoor area is a complete contrast to the existing army-type look outdoors. As a replica of London's Hyde Park, on arrival, visitors are made to feel that they have disembarked at Knightsbridge, London's underground tube. Prominent street signs, a cabbie and lots more, make up the facade of this recreational hotspot. The theme was chosen by its owner, His Excellency Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Thani, to complement overall business growth in the Emirate. He further stated that the aim is to provide a variety of opportunities for corporate team building and thrilling experiences for the young. We certainly are well catered for corporates. Uh, we have a very good uh, team building activity happening here. We have lots of corporates and big companies from the United Arab Emirates who, uh, who are our clients and come here on a regular basis for their team building. Uh, paintball it doesn't, uh, it, it encourages uh, leadership, encourages team building. Even during the hottest day of summer, they can still participate and play the game that they love to play, which is paintball. So obviously this does have an added value for the city of Sharjah to give it such a field and such a place for people to come and have fun. I'm really excited for this paintball park. I, I'm definitely going to come here like almost every week. And with that, let's take a look at the local and international weather forecast for tomorrow. And before we head out, here are the top stories again. UAE President receives Eid greetings from Muslim and Arab leaders. Dubai International Airport to be second busiest in the world. And tropical storm Nanmadol batters eastern China. Well, that brings us to the end of the bulletin. As always, we'd love to hear your comments. You can write to us at news at city7tv.com or by calling us on 04367 2230. From the entire news team, it's goodbye for now.